Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 4th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk a, about a natural variability related fe feature that has a big impact on the global climate system over the course of a, a one to two, maybe three year period. And that is the El Nino, La Nina cycling in the Pacific that is otherwise known as the ENSO pattern and is recorded or reported on by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And I am going to primarily talk about analysis based on El Nino, based on the information that NOAA provides. I, I will be providing you with a few links to these official reports. So, so please feel free to drill down and access the official reports. I, I am just providing an analysis based on these reports and on various atmospheric and ocean models associated with these reports as well. So it's worth noting that, that overall, NOAA is indicating a 60% chance that El Nino will occur during Northern Hemisphere fall and a 7%, I'm sorry, 70% chance that El Nino will occur during Northern Hemisphere winter of 2018 and 2019. Now it's worth noting that 60% chance is a high probability as is 70% chance, but there's still about a one in three chance or, or, or higher that El Nino will not occur. Although NOAA still is presently apparently quite confident that trends both in the atmosphere and in the ocean are moving toward an El Nino event. Now, El Nino has a number of impacts that we could say couple with human-caused climate change in that if an El Nino does occur, it's the, the peak warming period of the natural variability cycle, and we tend to see global temperatures hit new records, particularly global surface temperatures. And following El Nino, we, we tend to see a lot more heat transfer toward the poles in regions such as the Arctic and the Antarctic. Now for El Nino, we're looking at a band of the Pacific Ocean between the 10 degree north and 10 degree south latitude line. And we're looking at sea surface temperatures, primarily sea surface temperature anomaly readings or reading or departures from normal. And presently we can see that the central Pacific Ocean in the equatorial zone is primarily warmer than average, but the Eastern Equatorial Pacific, where El Nino typically emerges, is, is a little bit cooler than average over recent days. But what's occurring under the surface of the Pacific Ocean is we have quite a lot a, of warm water propagating toward the east and toward the central Pacific. And this, this propagation of warm water is, is known as a Kelvin wave and can be measured by, by this graphic that I am, I'm gonna go ahead and reload this because the animation appears to have, have stalled. But th so this, this graphic measures sea surface temperature anomalies at a depth of from the surface to 450 meters. And it shows the propagation of warm or cool water beneath the surface as it, ten as it tends to move from the Western Pacific toward the Eastern Pacific. And these propagations are, are known as Kelvin waves, primarily indicating propagations of various temperature be, being warmer than normal or cooler than normal. And as you can see, since at least July, we've had a number of, of warm Kelvin waves moving in beneath the central equatorial Pacific primarily, but propagating toward the eastern equatorial Pacific. Now these Kelvin waves can help to fuel El Nino events and they are a primary indicator of El Nino events. If the atmosphere couples with a warm Kelvin wave, we do tend to see 
El Nino type events occur. I'm going to go ahead and show you some another graphical indicator of, of the Kelvin wave dynamic that we have seen in the equatorial Pacific. And this is the upper ocean heat anomaly graphic provided by NOAA. And the warm Kelvin waves here are indicated by the longer dotted lines, and the cool Kelvin waves are indicated by the smaller dotted lines. So as we can see, since February, we've seen not one, not two, but three warm Kelvin waves propagating across the equatorial Pacific, which, which tends to provide fuel for El Nino events. Now it's worth noting that the kind of El Nino that NOAA expects us to see this fall and into the winter is, is, a, is a more moderate event and, and also what appears to be trending toward more of a mid-ocean type El Nino event. And overall, the, the model runs are indicating that the predicted El Nino is presently expected to peak out at about one degree Celsius above average sea surface temperature anomalies for the equatorial Pacific. I'm going to go ahead and also drill down or zoom into this CFSV2 model graphics. Note on the right hand side here are a sequence of maps for the equatorial Pacific indicating expected sea surface temperature anomalies for this zone. And it's worth noting that the sea surface temperature anomalies tend to peak out toward the, toward the central Pacific in the range of one to two, possibly in some locations as high as three degrees Celsius, but primarily one to two degrees Celsius above average. So this is a September, October, November map, October through December map, and so on, where we tend to see more of a mid-ocean El Nino type event indicated in this model with the Pacific Ocean overall much warmer than normal expected in this event. Now, if El Nino does occur, it will tend to wag global temperatures to the warmer side of the spectrum, although we won't likely tend to see as much of a spike as we saw during the Super El Nino of 2016. However, since fossil fuel burning continues and atmospheric carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere continue to increase, it's possible that if El Nino does occur, we would tend to see the records set in 2016 challenged during the 2019 timeframe if this predicted El Nino does occur. Now it's worth noting that NOAA is, is currently indicating a 70% chance peak probability for this El Nino to occur. There's still a 30% chance, which is still a substantial chance this, that this El Nino fizzles out and we don't see the kind of atmospheric coupling that would trend, that would lend toward the trending toward an El Nino type event. So just an overall analysis of El Nino and its relationship to human caused climate change, as well as predicted values coming from NOAA. And I'm going to go ahead and pro provide some links for you so you can read these reports. Thank you for joining me, and I will be chatting with you soon.